Everyone, let's talk about TEM versus TE and TM waves. So you notice here, I have drawn a parallel plate waveguide. So what is that? That is essentially two sheets of metal that are infinite extent and then infinitely thin uh, in their size here. And then they're separated by some little distance here marked with a D. So you notice I have the X direction over here, I have Z direction and then Y up here. So we're gonna assume this is a perfect electrical conductor and there's gonna be no uh, dielectrics or magnetic materials anywhere. So whenever we deal with uh, the parallel plate waveguide, it's pretty common to kind of look at a, a cross section here, <clears throat> a cross section and then draw it out like I've shown here. So you see I've got a PEC here on the bottom, perfect electrical conductor, then another PEC up top, uh, mu naught, epsilon naught, indicating free space everywhere in between. I have this distance D here separating them. And typically, you know, this will be uh, Y equals zero here. So Y equals D up here. And this direction is going to be the, the positive Z direction with Y here. And my X direction is pointing into the page. So if I do my right hand rule here, my fingers would point into X, curl along Y, and then point, my thumb would point along Z, giving me a right handed coordinate system. So why have I done all of this? Uh, well, there are, there are two ways you can excite a waveguide like this. So for the first example, I want you to just kind of imagine what would happen if I did something like this, where I took a voltage source and touched it to the top and bottom plates. So remember, we, we did a lecture on this a while back where physically what has to happen is this is going to pull charge in to the negative and deposit positive charge up here, right? So I'll have some positive charge here and some negative charge left behind. And that little separation of charge is then going to want to just sort of speed down my little uh, waveguide here uh, at some phase velocity. Okay, so we, we did sort of this analogy already with something like thin wires, where if I have these sort of like infinitely large plates, you can see like nothing really kind of fundamentally changes uh, assuming that this potential is applied uniformly everywhere across this board here, right? Or lost the, across the edge. So I guess you would imagine it uh, here on my Z. Okay, so my, my little uh, sinusoidal source would touch here and it's a perfect conductor. Uh, but you gotta be careful not to say apply at different little points because then you would imagine it would want to sort of radially propagate out. So you imagine the potential is applied uniformly across this plate. So what happens now is I have this separation of charge and you can imagine that there's going to be an electric field pointing down here. So let's redraw this really, really quick. I'm going to kind of zoom in on this little separation here. So here's my top plate and then here's my bottom and I have some positive charge here collecting on the top and some negative charge collecting on the bottom. So naturally with a separation of charge, there will be some electric field between all these positive charges pointing down to the negative charges here. And you can also see that the direction of that electric field is going to be in the negative Y direction. Furthermore, because this little collection of charge is gonna to want to propagate down in some direction, that implies <clears throat> a current this direction because of the positive charge. And then of course, the negative charge is moving to the right would imply a negative current over here. So I have a positive and a negative current propagating towards the right. <clears throat> so you do the right hand rule and imagine a current here that implies my magnetic field wants to go into the page. So there'll be some magnetic field kind of inside the page like this. And of course um, a negative current here is also going to curl in to give you a magnetic field like so. And this whole bundle of charge and electromagnetic fields is going to propagate down this direction into, so, so this is uh, not a direction here. So this is a, a Z hat direction here. My, we'll write this out as my electric field, sorry, just to make sure that there's not quite so much confusion here. So I'm gonna say my electric field uh, will be something like negative Y hat <coughs> E naught. And then there'll be some propagation down Z like so. And then my magnetic field, we'll just write this out real quick, might do something like 
<clears throat> bees. And so into the page is going to be my positive x direction. So plus x will be a b naught e to the minus j kz like so. And this little cluster of energy here just propagates down. Okay, so this, because you'll notice I have an electric field that is pointing down this way and a magnetic field in here, and everything's propagating that way. Everything is at perfect right angles. So that's where you hear this phrase, T-E-M, meaning transverse. Transverse meaning like perpendicular or orthogonal to. Transverse electro, electric or electromagnetic wave. So both, it is transverse electric and transverse magnetic fields. Both the electric and the magnetic fields are transverse to the direction of propagation. So you get TEM. This is different now from the other options we've seen, which is T and TM here. So this is what we get. The TEM is what happens when you kind of do this charge separation here. <clears throat> so let's do another little variation. So I'm gonna redraw my waveguide here, like so. So again, this is the Z hat direction. So now instead of attaching a voltage source to my uh, two conductors here, what if I instead, just way far away, I had an antenna here. So just kind of ignore this in here. And it is radiating waves. Okay, and so by the time they get up here, you imagine a plane wave, some electromagnetic wave propagating in space, striking this waveguide, and you'll get a little bit of a you know, diffraction around here, and you get this sort of propagation of a wave into this waveguide, which then, which then starts guiding down and gets captured. So this is a very distinct way of exciting a waveguide that is very separate from this kind of method here. So in this situation, you have two options for how the, the wave could strike this waveguide here. So one option could be, you imagine, so I'm gonna draw a dot here, say, um, and I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna have an X. So that is gonna be my electric field vector. And then I have a wave vector, I'm gonna call that K. So which direction is my magnetic field? It has to obey the right hand rule. So I'm a little backwards here. So you put your fingers in, they curl in the direction of the magnetic field, and that's the direction of propagation. So my magnetic field here will be a B <clears throat> pointing in that direction there. So that is my transverse electromagnetic wave. When I strike the waveguide, what happens is you get some energy kind of propagating up and down, and the fields sort of just bl uh, blend into each other. And you get an interesting effect where the electric field down in here is still going to point that same direction. But because I'm going to have some waves kind of propagating back and forth at various angles here, you might see something that sort of looks like this for a wave propagating that way. And then I'll have that sort of superimposing on a wave sort of doing this sort of thing, which is going to propagate that way. And these two waves are just gonna sort of blend into each other. And what can happen is your magnetic field might have a component of its vector that is longitudinal with the direction of energy propagation. So in this situation, you would say it is transverse electric, but not transverse magnetic. So TE here. I come in, my electric field still is going to just point in this direction, but now because my wave starts bouncing around, I can get parts of my magnetic field now either going into the direction of propagation or away, and it'll vary maybe intensity going from zero to D here. <clears throat> so you get this notion of TE implying transverse electric. Oops, sorry, transverse electric but not magnetic. So by a similar argument, I could imagine taking this little antenna here and rotating it 90 degrees, say so, or sorry, I guess initially it was already this direction because the electric field would uh, be co-polarized here. So now I imagine rotating it the other way. And instead of having electric field and magnetic field, I might have something. Uh, so let's, let's sort of redraw this real quick. Another little waveguide here, like so. Move this up here. So here's another waveguide. Imagine a, a plane wave kind of striking it like so. Only instead of my electric field going in, let's say I have a magnetic field kind of doing this, and now my electric field is here. So I'm going to call this E. 
like so, and then this is going to be my B. So you see how I sort of rotated it 90 degrees so that my magnetic field is now transverse and my electric field uh, is up here. But when everything hits uh, this waveguide, you're gonna get this sort of superposition of waves kind of doing this effect. So again, what'll happen is my magnetic field will remain transverse, but I might get a component of my electric field doing this direction. And then it's superimposed with another wave going in the other direction, which might, uh, you know, further down the line, I'll see maybe a little piece of my wave propagating like this. So this would be, this is my wave vector, this is my magnetic field, this is my electric field. And depending on the direction, you can see the electric field will either be into the Z direction or away from it. So this is where we get a notion of transverse magnetic. Like so. So there is a TEM, meaning transverse electromagnetic, which is what you would get in this kind of a situation. Then there's TE, transverse electric, which would imply my antenna is kind of co-polarized this way. Uh, so my electric field would align with the antenna this way, or that way if you prefer. And then this other situation, my antenna might be this way. So now my electric fields are oriented parallel to the page, and then the magnetic field is transverse. So just remember, in this case, the electric field will remain transverse independently of whether it's going up or down here, but the magnetic field will kind of go into and out of that particular Z direction. So transverse electric, but not transverse magnetic. And then of course, vice versa here, where you have a similar effect. Okay, so that is to differentiate between TE and TM versus TEM here. And we're gonna to have to kind of break down each of these situations one by one. So this is kind of its own special little category, but these two are actually very, very similar. The mathematics behind these is almost identical. And the physical behavior is identical, but this guy here is sort of the outlier. So you could say one of these is not like the others. Okay, so more on that in the next lecture. Thank you.